Hey, I hope you're doing good. Today, you know what? Let's make our crypto trading more automatic. And I want to show you how easy it is to place orders in Python using the CCXT library, which basically works with any exchanges. That's the best part. We're going to tackle spot market, futures, market orders, limit orders, leverage, all of it. So let's get started. <music> The CCXT library is really a popular library when it comes to algo trading in Python. So let me tell you briefly why. And I think the main keyword is here. It is because it is a unified API, meaning that under the same structure, the same functions, you can deal with many, many crypto exchanges that exist out there. And for sure, you'll find all the top ones in there. This indeed implies that you don't have to learn all the specifics of each API of each crypto exchanges, but you just learn the main functions of the CCXC library and you're good to go. You can see that they are also quite straightforward. You'll have load markets, fetch tickers, fetch OHLCV data. Those are the public ones, meaning you don't require an API key. Then the private ones where you have to communicate with the exchange you're working with are the ones on the right. And today in this tutorial, we'll be using those three. Now to place orders, the first thing we need to do is to set up the API keys to communicate with the exchange. So let's have a look at that together and then we'll move to a spot market order. First things first, let me first install the CCXD library and then import it. I will put all the codes of this video on our GitHub so you can access it freely and use it if you need. You'll find all the information in the description below. Let's now set up the API keys together. As an example for this tutorial, I will be using the KuCoin exchange and here I need to provide therefore the API key, the secret key and the password. What you have to provide can depend on the exchange you choose and if you ever need to know what exactly you need to give for this given exchange, you can just run this required credentials function. So to create your API key and get all this information here, typically you need to go on the profile of your exchange and you will often have something called API management. Then you click there, follow the procedure to create the API key. Of course, be careful, select what you want. Here we're going to be trading, so you need to give the possibility for trading, etc, etc. Obviously, this information is confidential and you should not share it because it gives access to your account. I am showing it for the sake of the tutorial, but I will delete my API key once I'm done with this video. Anyway, so let's run this cell and then I suggest to check that everything went fine. We could check for our balance. So let me run this. Okay, it seems we have 20 USDT free to trade with. Let's check whether that is what we see here in our account and indeed it matches. So we are all good. Great guys, we're now ready and set up to place our first trade orders. And as you can see, the create order function is really straightforward to use. You simply need to give the symbol you want to trade, the order type, the side of the trade, and the amount. For this example, I'm going for the ADA USDT pair. We said the first order type we will look into is a market order. Then I want to do a buy first. And the amount that I'm giving here, note however, a little caveat, this amount is in the base currency. If you feel like you want to do the buy giving a number that is in the code currency, so in USDT, you can do the conversion that I display here. So the first thing you need to do is fetch the current price of the asset to do the conversion. So there you can use several conventions and prices. Here in the example, I'm going for a standard conversion where I compute the current price as being the average between the ask and the bid price. You could, for example, fetch maybe the last price and there are other possibilities. If you want to see what possibilities there are, you could just print this fetch ticker symbol. Anyway, for this example, let's say we'll go for maybe 5 USDT. So we want to buy 5 USDT worth of ADA. So, okay, let's simply run the cell and see what will happen. We should directly check here. And there we go. Indeed, we lost 5 USDT from our initial amount. And we bought with that amount about 16.38, etc. ADA. Let me point out something here. This function executed our order on the exchange, but I've also stored the result in this order variable. So let me print what is stored in there. And indeed, as expected, you will have all the information about the order. So there is a ton of information. But what I want to point out, the thing important, is the order ID. So if, for example, later on in the code, maybe you want to cancel the order, etc., you will need to use the order ID. We'll actually do that together in a bit. 
Let's sell the ADA that we bought before we move to the limit orders. So let me simply paste the amount that we had bought. Note that since I'm selling ADA here, I'm writing directly the amount in base currency. So let me simply run this and we should check what happened here. You can note that we don't exactly come back to the balance that we had before in USDT. And there's essentially two reasons for that. The first is indeed that the price in between the buy and the sell that we did must have fluctuated a tiny bit. But also we did lose some money in trading fees. So if you want to trade with some discounts on your trading fees or have some deposit bonuses, check the links in the description down below. You can get some very cool deals with our registration links. Moving on, let's look at a spot limit order now. Honestly, this is also very straightforward. You can see that I've simply changed the order type to limit and I've added one new variable, the price at which I would like the limit order to be executed. And this price variable now needs to simply be added at the end of the create order function. At the moment of this video, ADA is trading at around 0.3 USDT. So here I chose a much lower price so that I'm sure when I'm going to run this cell, the order will not be executed and therefore I can show it displayed on the exchange. Okay, so let's go. And great, you can see it displayed here. We could cancel it here manually, but let me use this opportunity to show you how to use this cancel order. And you can note that I've put order ID here and the order ID will be of that one that I've just executed at this point here. So let's run it and we should see it disappear. Indeed, it did. Let me point out something more here. Depending on what you're doing in your code and how you're using this create order function, there exists some more specific create orders where you don't need to set manually what type of order or what type of side you're doing. As you can see here, you have a create market buy order, create sell order, the same for limit, etc. Nice. I think we've done enough with the spot market. Let's tackle futures orders now. KuCoin is a bit peculiar because it has separated this spot and futures API. So that's why here I, I'm doing the authentication with KuCoin futures. But in general, with most exchanges, it is not like this. You would keep what you have done with spot here. So let me run this cell and let's also run this one to see if everything went fine. So it looks like we have 7.93. Let's see in our futures account. And indeed, it all matches. This is a good time to show you if you ever need to know how the symbols are written, the one you can trade, etc. You can use the fetch market function. So let me show you. And there you go. You have all the information necessary. There's quite a lot. Note, for example, to trade futures, the symbols in KuCoin are written with at the end a M. I guess the M goes for margin. Let's look into longs to start with. So nothing much changed. As you can see, I simply put the symbol with an M at the end. In this case, we will go for market here. And because we're going for a long, we will set the side to buy. You can see here that now if I want to control the leverage, I'm doing this using this dictionary here that needs to be fed at this point at the end in the create order function. Okay, so let me run it and we can see if it displays here in our positions. And indeed, as you see, it's exactly updated here. Okay, so let me close it here and we can now look into a short. So I'm going for exactly the same thing, but now, as you might have guessed, the side is changed to sell. So let me simply run that. And there we go. We have now a short position that has been entered. So let me close that as well, because I want to show you something a bit more technical now. It is orders with conditions on the price. So typically you would use this when you want to go for a take profit or a stop loss. With KuCoin, these are called limit stop orders. This kind of wording changes a bit between exchanges, but the principle remains the same. This I'm showing you in the context of the futures because now we're quite warmed up. But let me show you that this also exists as well in the spot market. And as you can see here, you have this stop limit here. Okay, so let's actually set one up using the CCXT library. The beginning is exactly the same. This is indeed a limit order. And I'm going for a sell because I want to show you the example of a stop loss. So the specificity of this stop limit order is that you give a trigger price. So this is the price at which the order will be triggered. And then you give a price and this is the price at which the order will be fulfilled. So here, given that I'm going for a stop loss and therefore I'm going for a sell, I decided that this should happen if the price of the asset drops below 0.25. And since I want to be sure for the order to actually be executed straight after that, I'm giving this sell price to be slightly lower. 
And then you can see that these specificities are then given in the params dictionary. Here, because I'm going for stop loss, I set this stop to down. If you wanted, for example, to do a take profit, this should be up. Then I give here the stop price, so I was trigger price. And finally, you need to give the stop price type, and I went for MP. Okay, so let's actually run the cell so we see it appearing on our exchange. And you can see that indeed there's now a stop order that came here. And there we go, we have a sell stop order that would be triggered if the price reaches the trigger price that we had set. Okay, great. Before we wrap up though, let's go over a few important caveats. Each exchanges have their own APIs and of course they're different. So the brilliant thing with CCXT is that it managed to capture all of that within the same framework. And we have seen that this create order function is really straightforward. But obviously, given the differences in between the APIs, sometimes CCXT needs to handle these specific differences differently. The smart way it does that is notably by using this params dictionary, where you feed some special parameters. But what works for a exchange might not work for another one. But the really cool thing with CCXT is that because it is so popular, any questions that you have have most likely already been asked on the internet. So with a few searches and a few clicks, you can find what you need. Here, for example, I checked as an example how to set a leverage on KuCoin using CCXT, and I found my answer straight away. Of course, if you need also more information, you can always look into the documentation of CCXT. But what I also can suggest is that when you need to look at something very specific on how CCXT handles a specific exchange, you can come here on their GitHub and then find the specific wrapper of the exchange so you can find how things are handled. I found, for example, KuCoin in here with a little search of create order. I came to this window here. And here I'm highlighting, for example, if I wanted to know how leverage could have been implemented, you could see that it would go through the dictionary as we did. Unfortunately, because of some specificities of some exchanges APIs, not everything works using this params dictionary as we did here. Here's an example, Bybit. If you want to set the leverage, you can't do it with a params dictionary. You need to use a separate CCXT function, which is called set leverage. And there you have it, folks. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop them down below or join our community Discord. Don't forget a little like and a subscription if you feel like it. All the best with your trading and see you soon.